Our next speaker is uh, Sid Vanderveen. Um, Sid graduated as a civil engineer from the University of Ottawa in 1985. For 28 years, he was employed as a drainage coordinator for the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs. In, his, in this capacity, he was responsible for the provincial administration of the Drainage Act, focusing on municipal drains, the Tile Drainage Act, uh, focusing on Tile Loan Program and the Agricultural Tile Drainage Installation Act, overseeing the licensee of Tile Drainage Contractors. He currently holds the position of Secretary Treasurer of the Land Improvement Contractors of Ontario, as well as working as a drainage engineer for RJ Burnside Associates Limited and a contract trainer for Ridgetown College. So please welcome Sid Vanderveen. After Dr. Charlebois' presentation, I feel like I need to start off by saying I'm an omnivore. I like meat. Um, the other thing that all those words, um, the other thing that I like to describe myself as is a, a drainage geek. I love drainage. Uh, my kids used to complain big time when we'd go on vacation and I'd go around looking at some f feature of drainage and they'd be going, oh dad, what are you doing now? Um, so I love, I love looking at drainage items. Um, so I told a farmer friend of mine that I was going to Alberta in February uh, and his first question was, uh, why? And I said, what do, you, what do you mean why? He said, why February? And I thought, good question. Good question. And I said, well, I'm going to talk to the Alberta Irrigation Districts Association. And he says, why is a drainage geek going to talk to a bunch of irrigation geeks? And, um, and I said, another good question, but um, we can look at our differences, but I see a great deal of similarities between the um, drainage and irrigation. Um, both are forms of infrastructure, managing water, uh, both serve the agricultural sector, and and um, this might be, uh, as far as I'm concerned, this is very true. Both serve the purpose. Both uh, irrigation and drainage is forms of soil moisture management. One in one way, another in another direction. But uh, but there are some things that we have in common. So with that in mind, I'm going to talk a little bit about tile drainage, and then I'm going to talk about three pieces of legislation in my former role I used to administer. And I'd really, I'm going to try to stress how could you use this particular model? You might be able to garner things or grab things out of these pieces of legislation and use them for irrigation. We've been hearing funding. I, I heard the uh, MLA uh, talk about yeah, there's lots of demand for money. Well, there might be different ways of doing things and, uh, and you might be able to use some of the things that we've, we've been doing in Ontario on drainage um, as a potential um, way of, of funding irrigation as well. So first of all, tile drainage, the practice. Okay, so what is it? Um, in, in Ontario, what we do is install pipes beneath the surface of the agricultural land. Um, and it's a series of pipes, and the whole purpose is to drain the gravitational water. It is not making the, the, wa the soil so dry that it can't um, sustain any uh, crops. It's just to drain the, the, the gravitational water in the soil. The typical depth of installation is about two and a half feet. Um, it may vary somewhat depending on the topography. It also varies based on crop and soils and, and economics. What can you afford? Because tile drainage is not necessarily cheap. Um, it costs in the order of $1,500 an acre to put in a system systematically. Here's just a, um, a short little video clip of, a, of a, um, um, a tile drainage system being installed. Um, prior to this clip being made, they had installed a, uh, a main right here. Um, nope, that's not showing up on your screen. Anyways, this is an individual who's putting the four inch perforated plastic pipe into a chute and uh, then it's going down and he's going to be connecting it to the main. Um, and um, from there, the machine moves on and installs the pipe beneath the surface of the agricultural land. What are they? The way I've always looked at it, a couple of descriptions, they are, they are like um, enclosed ditches. 
So when you have perforated pipe beneath the surface of the land, what it's doing is draining the water in the soil around there and taking it away. The other description that I've, I've um, often used to non-agricultural folks when they talk about tile drainage and why would farmers do it, I go, it's very similar to holes in the bottom of a flower pot. If you keep water in your plant and don't have holes in the bottom, you will eventually um, see a, a significant problem. So that's tile drainage. Why drain? Well, there's a variety of different benefits. There's been studies done all over the place, and, and here are some of them. Increased soil temperature, which equates to uh, earlier planting dates, which is crucial for some of our areas, and I would assume the same applies for Alberta. Um, some areas where we have um, shorter growing seasons, particularly in northern Ontario, these early planting dates are, are crucial. Better soil structure, which, uh, which involves a reduced soil compaction and improved trafficability. Um, in Ontario, there's uh, no, no shortage of pictures of tractors getting stuck in wet, wet soil conditions, so uh, that's one way of reducing that. It also reduces surface runoff, um, which means that there's reduced soil erosion. Why is that important? Um, well, with reduced soil erosion, not only is your plant, your growing area, not going downstream, it's also making sure that you're not moving sediment and those things attached to those sediment particles to the receiving water body, so there's an environmental benefit there. Um, I've often described tile-drained land as stormwater management systems for rural Ontario. Um, it, they serve as a storage area, so when we get these uh, massive rainfalls that we seem to be getting more and more of, um, it ends up being able to store some of that surplus water in the soil itself. Improved disease and weed control. Key thing for farmers is um, increased crop productivity. And for, for Ontario farmers, this is based on 20 years of research, corn yields increased 29%, soybeans 26 and so on. You can read the numbers. It's significant. Um, a farmer friend of mine has said that, um, he said the difference between, for me, tile draining and not tile draining is the difference between profit and loss, which you're in the business of making profit and there's uh, nothing wrong with that. So, so the key pieces of legislation, um, three pieces of legislation I'm gonna talk about, Tile Drainage Act, Agricultural Tile Drainage Installation Act, and the Drainage Act. And again, I'm gonna try to emphasize some points to see where you might find some parallels or some particular models um, for irrigation. Tile Drainage Act, Tile Loan Program, um, that's what we refer to it as, but again, it was done under the Tile Drainage Act. It's a piece of legislation that was passed in Ontario in 1878, and um, it has been changed since then. It's not the same. Um, but the whole purpose was to provide a funding mechanism for farmers to install tile drainage. It was something that we encouraged and still actively encourage to today. Um, so they provide owners of agricultural land with funding, access to loans through the installation of tile drainage through their local municipality. And, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's a 10-year term loan. And here's the part that um, uh, my, my board at the Land Improvement Contractors of Ontario doesn't like. 6% interest rate, what are you doing? Um, what are you doing to us? You're making money, that's what you're doing. Um, anyways, that's way too high. There was a time in the early 80s where we were loaning out about $30 million a year in tile loans because the interest rate, if you remember the early 80s, um, the interest rate for tile loans was max for one year, 10%, uh, and beyond that it was an 8% loan. So probably 60% of the tile drainage in Ontario was actually um, funded through the loan program. And they can receive up to 75% to the maximum of $50,000 per farmer per year. What's the process? And this is again, I know you're probably thinking, I don't need tile drainage, but can this model be used for you? Here's the process. It involves your local municipalities. The owner applies to the municipal council for a loan, and uh, on approval, then they arrange to get the work done. The municipal tile inspector inspects to verify that the work's actually been done, and then the municipality sells a debenture, or a bond if you want to call it that, to the province. So the province is the, the source of the funding, they pass it on to the municipality. In the meantime, the municipality passes a levying bylaw, 
um, which, is imposes, which imposes the repayments on the property taxes of the property owner. So there's excellent security for the municipality, and then, um, and then they collect the repayments and pass it back on to the province. So in this day and age when you are, are there's growing shortages of access to funding, is this something that you could potentially lobby your government to say, hey, we, we want something like a loan program, but more at the 3% interest rate, not at the 6%, and see if you can uh, uh, use that to fund some of your irrigation infrastructure. So the, the value to the um, agricultural property owners as simple property, simple application process, same status as property acts, uh, stat Property taxes, so there's easy recovery, longer term loan, it doesn't interfere with your operating loans. And what's in it for municipalities? I don't know if there's any municipal representatives here. I've often fielded that question. Well, when they install tile drainage systems on farmland, it results in higher value land, which results in higher property taxes and a better local economy. So that's that's what's in it for the municipality. So that's the loan program in, in a nutshell. The other one that we have is a piece of legislation that was passed in 1973, an agricultural drainage licensing program. And, and it was, again, passed in 73. And its purpose was to protect agricultural property owners. So tile drainage systems, again, if you're not familiar with them, if you install them poorly, they're worse than not having any tile drainage system at all. So if you um, put them in and they're not in on grade um, and not designed well, they can actually create wet spots. They need to be installed properly. So this legislation was passed in 1973 and it requires um, the tile drainage contractors to um, be licensed as well as their machines and their machine operators. The machine operators need to go through a, an apprenticeship type program, including training, training on how to design tile drainage systems, how to install them on grade, and, um, and they also have to go through um, an operating experience process. Um, the second type of license is the machine license. So every tile drainage machine, I showed you a video clip of one earlier, every one of those machines is licensed and they have to prove that they are able of installing tile on grade so that water can flow by gravity. And then we test, um, the OMAFRA, the Ministry of Agriculture and Food tests each model of machine and to make sure that it's capable of, of installing it properly. And here's just some examples of, of machines that were installed, that are sold and built and sold. Uh, all three of these models, the first three, the wolf plow, the brawn plow, and the tape plow are, are plows that are designed in, uh, in Ontario and actually sold worldwide. And then the last one is a wheel machine. That's, that's a, um, that's a system that's used when you actually want trenches. So uh, they actually dig trenches to install the tile drainage system. The last type of license is the business license. In order to get a business license, you have to have a licensed machine and a class A operator, and you have to assume responsibility for the tile drainage system that you're, you're um, installing. So in Ontario, there's other jurisdictions that require engineering firms to do design of tile drainage systems. What we've done is said, hey, let's put the, um, the responsibility on the contractor. Let's train them to design these tile drainage systems and design them well. But with that design responsibility and in installation responsibility comes an accountability for the work that you do as well. And then there's also a provincial tile inspector who is appointed by the, uh, uh, by the province and they will uh, inspect and some of these machines or machine operators and um, just j tile drainage systems um, generally. We also have some technical documents. Um, the first one is a drainage guide for Ontario. So it's basically the standards for installing tile drainage system. And the other one is a, um, uh, you might be familiar with some of these. There's a whole series of best management practice booklets that have been produced by Ontario. And this one is on cropland drainage, things that you can do to, uh, for good um, for, um, for installing tile drainage systems. Now, I've been asked a little bit about what's the approval process. For most tile drainage systems, um, they don't require any permits or approvals at all in order to install tile drainage systems. 
There are some conservation authorities, we've heard about conservation authorities that will require um, permits to connect to an outlet. So where you bring the discharge pipe, you may have to get a permit for that. And there are certainly restrictions when working around wetlands as well. Um, there's a whole lot more that I could tell you about this, but I'm gonna continue on. Um, so here, we've been doing a survey of agricultural pipe manufacturers in Ontario since 1976. Um, I've had all sorts of contractors come up to me going, when is this going to die? Um, is, is our business going to be done? Are we going to drain all the land and won't need to do any more? Um, and a lot of that was happening during the 1990s. What we found out is there's an increase in activity. What we, what we find is when farmers buy a 100-acre parcel of land, the first thing they'll do is call up a contractor and get it tile drained. Um, that's just the general activity now. In the last five years, um, total of 1.7 million hectares, oh no, not in the last five years, a total of 1.7 million hectares or 4.2 million acres of tile drained agricultural land in Ontario. Last five years we've averaged around a little over 50 million meters or 172 million feet of tile installed. Um, just to give you an idea, I did the old uh, not football stadiums, numbers still too high. That's 11 times back and forth across Canada with a, with a drainage pipe installed in, in Ontario. In 2019, there was uh, 103 licensed tile drainage businesses and uh, 177 machines and 382 uh, licensed tile drainage op operators. So it's big. Now, I'm not saying that this applies to Alberta. We're, we have a totally different uh, environment. We're on the leeward side of the Great Lakes and we tend to get dumped on for snow and, uh, and rainfall, so tile drainage is important for that reason. The thing with tile drainage systems though, um, and again, this is something that again you might be able to connect with some of your irrigation systems. Um, tile drainage systems collect water and what the courts have said is if you collect water and discharge it onto a property owner that didn't, wouldn't naturally receive it, and it causes damages, you could be held liable for those damages. So you need to be careful about that. So as a result, there is a potential liability for collecting this, this water with tile drainage systems. But because it was so important for the development of agricultural land in Ontario, what they did was they passed uh, a piece of legislation called the Drainage Act. And um, it was passed in 1859, which I find fascinating. It was before we became a country. Um, we, uh, we had drainage legislation in Ontario. The whole purpose of the act is to provide a process to resolve drainage problems. And the process is all built on communal systems. Now, when I say communal, it doesn't mean everybody's getting along perfectly, and I'll describe that a little bit more later on. These drainage systems, these communal drainage systems, and I... I equate that somewhat to some of your uh, communal irrigation systems. They're mo built mostly on private land, but they're funded through a levy on the lands in the watershed of the drainage system. So again, similar to the tile loan program, the, the cost of these systems are assessed back to the property owners that actually derive a benefit from the drainage system or contribute water into it. Um, and at the end of the whole process that I'll describe in just a little bit, um, it becomes municipal infrastructure managed by the municipality with costs paid for by the property owners. Um, so the process is property owners petition the municipal council for a solution to their drainage problems. And again, there's a certain majority that it has to meet, but if there's, a, there's enough, there's a, it could be that a group of two or three or four property owners could actually start a project under the Drainage Act um, and drag their neighbors along with them. Uh, council, assuming they accept the petition, they would appoint an engineer. The engineer meets with the property owners and, um, and then they would go out and perform a field survey and design the drainage system and they would write up that in uh, the design in a report. They would also obtain any necessary approvals and they would submit this report to the municipal council. 
Um, the municipal council meets with the uh, property owners, so they would say, okay, here's what the proposal is. We're responding to this petition for drainage. Here's what the proposal is. Here's what the cost is. Um, the report would indicate how the cost should be shared. Owners then have a legal right to appeal any aspect of that report, including the financial recovery, my assessments are too high, or any technical or legal appeals as well. Um, after the appeals, council adopts the report by bylaw, and then that gives them the authorization to actually construct the drainage system. So that bylaw then allows them to go onto private land, potentially even the land of property owners that have been opposed to the system, and allows them to construct it. So uh, this is the power of the Drainage Act in, in performing drainage systems is it can force a, a system being constructed on a minority who is not in favor of it and force them to pay a, con a share of the cost as well. So it, again, it's fairly, it's fairly um, powerful. Um, and again, I mentioned this, the costs are levied to the property owners. So. What are the features of a municipal drain? It has legal existence. It's, uh, it's there through a municipal bylaw that adopts an engineer's report that defines the whole system. The other key feature is it becomes municipal infrastructure. So after it's built, the municipality has a legal obligation to manage the system on behalf of the ratepayers in that drainage area. Um, and there is a potential liability if they don't do their job. Um, it's predominantly built on private land, but with the, drain, the building of this drainage system, the municipality re, uh, acquires a right-of-way um, along the drain so that they are allowed to do their work. And there's also some provincial grants available. So this is the only part of the drainage system, the drainage legislation, where we actually have some, some grants. So what are the grants? Uh, it's authorized by the Ontario Drainage Act. There are grants, so I mentioned that when you build a drainage system, it's assessed out to the property owners in the watershed. Um, the yeah, assessments that fall on agricultural land um, are eligible for a one-third grant in southern Ontario and two-thirds northern Ontario. Don't ask me why, it's a political thing. Um, Anyways, there's also a, min a grant for the municipal cost of employing a drainage superintendent. So they actually, the municipalities have individuals who are responsible for, um, for managing these systems and they're called drainage superintendents. And the province provides a 50% um, grant towards that cost. In total, the grant program um, for managing, building and managing drainage systems in Ontario is around $10 million annually. Um, and the grant funding has been available since about 1900. Um, now, some of the issues. Um, in my time with the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, most of my time was spent on the outlet drains. And because there are issues when you start working in water courses, uh, we need to get approvals from fisheries and oceans. We had a working group, a drains action working group that dealt with issues and for the most part we had a pretty good working relationship with fisheries and oceans in terms of getting, um, getting approvals and getting work done and, um, and recognizing the importance of fish and fish habitat as well. Species at risk, the federal legislation, particularly in southwestern Ontario, there are all sorts of species at risk, so that, that is a challenge, um, but we've been able to manage these systems for the good of the agricultural community. Somebody mentioned earlier conservation authorities. Um, well, there's conservation authorities that uh, regulate water courses, so you have to get permits from the conservation authority, and also uh, they regulate wetlands. So any system that may have an impact on wetlands, they need to go through the, uh, the conservation authorities for uh, permits and approvals. But with that, we again had a working group, and, and I have nothing to, but positive things to say about our working relationship with, uh, with the conservation authorities in general through this working group. We were able to resolve and still manage to get things done. Um, and then there's also the Endangered Species Act. Those are the prominent uh, pieces of legislation that we, we um, dealt with in developing and managing municipal drains under the Drainage Act. This is just a clip we have um, on the Ministry of Agriculture and Food has a layer, it's a site called AgMaps, and one of the layers on this AgMaps is 
shows municipal drains. So these are, in one area of the province, the municipal drains that are, are um, being managed by the municipality. In total, over, the, uh, over all the province, there is over 45,000 kilometers of municipal drains that have been constructed and managed by municipalities. In 2015, there were 156 new projects, drain construction or improvement projects, um, total cost of $24 million. And again, remember, that's, that's the total cost. That's not necessarily the grant amount. The grant amount for that would probably be about a fifth of the, um, the 24 million. So we're looking at maybe $5 million, somewhere around there for the construction projects. Um, the rest of it is getting funded by property owners. Municipalities would pay their share as well for road crossings. Uh, um, railways would pay their, their share. Um, then there was also performed by municipalities 2,361 drain maintenance projects where they would clean out drains. Um, we have a huge issue with uh, Phragmites in, in southern, particularly southwestern Ontario, but it's extending. So some of these systems need to be cleaned out in order to keep it functioning. And last year, again, um, 11.3, sorry, in 2015, $11.3 million paid in grants for all activities. So we got a little bit of a problem there. There's a $10 million budget. There's $11.3 million demand. But anyways, that's, uh, uh, that's things that they're working on. I talked to the gentleman from... from um, Ducks Unlimited earlier, and uh, one of the things that we're trying to do using the Drainage Act, the concept is we're building drainage systems, and, and particularly early on, we're just trying to get rid of the water. Well, now we're trying to do more of managing the water because we have both intense storms, but we also have more intense dry periods. So we're trying to work to hold back water in certain, in smarter areas, to retain. So we uh, retain um, perhaps enhancing wetlands in order to temporarily store water on the landscape or build um, storage ponds as well as part of these drain designs. So with that, I'm, I, um, I'm done. Um, so uh, again, the organization that I'm here representing is the Land Improvement Contractors of Ontario. They, um, they are tile drainage contractors. Um, and um, um, so they have an annual convention similar to what you're doing. So I was looking at what was going on with great interest. So anyways, thank you. Any questions? I, I, I got a question for you. Uh, first of all, I'll say, wow, you know, um, <laughs> we're probably a little opposite over here in this part of the country. We, we probably started draining here about 15 years ago. Um, we don't, we don't necessarily have our governments, our environment, and municipalities helping us do this. They're usually we're usually fighting them to get it done. Now I think that is changing. So Brian, don't don't get upset. But anyways, <laughs> um, I, my question to you is, who takes care of where this water ends up? That's that's the biggest, I guess, fight or concern uh, people have here. You know, where, where's this water going? And everybody's, you know, uh, asking the question, where, where are you, uh, so, so where are your municipalities sending this water? Who's, who's, who's in charge? Um, so a lot of these municipal drains are, um, are draining into other municipal drains, which drain into other municipal drains. There's probably in some areas five or six different levels of municipal drains that are managed by the municipality. Um, one of the things that the engineer has to do in order to design a system is they have to verify that there is a sufficient outlet. It's a term defined in the drainage act, but it's a, basically a place where the drain won't do any damage to downstream property owners. So that's something that they have to be willing to stamp their report and sign it and take the liability for it. So that's significant. Um, and and um, I've often said in my role as drainage coordinator with OMAFRA, I wish more developments would do that um, because we, uh, we often have developments happening and, and water isn't dealt with necessarily properly. So there is an aspect of that. Does that mean everything's done perfectly? No, absolutely not. As far as your comment about working with environmental agencies, 
it hasn't always been a rosy path, absolutely not. But I prefer to focus on the positive rather than the negative. Um, one of the things that we did, uh, we had with the conservation authorities, we had some issues that made the press and was highly controversial. We set up this drains action, um, no, drainage act resolution team. And um, the first meeting we had, there was all the conservation authorities folks on one side of the table and all the drainage folks on the other side of the table. And uh, I told my senior management in Omafra that best thing we did was we bought them lunch and they forced, forced them to talk together. And later on, after we worked together, we had actually drainage folks um, defending the position of the conservation authorities and vice versa. So you can find that common ground. There is, a, there, is, there is an importance for protection of fish habitat and the protection of wetlands, but I won't listen to you if you tell me that drainage isn't important in Ontario, because it is. And so that's the non-negotiable for me. You tell me that you, can, you understand the reason why drainage is important in Ontario, I can work with you in terms of protecting fish habitat and wetlands and, and endangered species. Sid, thanks for the information on tile drainage. Uh, I'm Janelle Villeneuve and I work with water quality for the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry here in yes. Alberta. So I'm just wondering if you could speak a bit more specifically to any water quality considerations um, in the process, whether it's upfront in the approvals or afterwards in the management of these systems, because as we know, this water potentially could affect the, the receiving water or the yeah. downstream water bodies. I'll be honest with you, Janelle, there's very little on the water quality side. And um, first of all, I want, I want to say that when we talk about drainage, we are talking about drainage of agricultural lands as they currently exist. So one of the key points is um, lands in Ontario drain whether there's tile drainage there or not. Um, so when drainage is happening, whether it's tile drained or, um, or not, whether it's just happening naturally, by our agricultural practices, is if we're doing conventional tillage, if we're applying nutrients, uh, there will be some movement happening downstream. With tile drainage, there is both a positive and negative um, impact on the, uh, on the uh, environment or water quality. First of all, there, there's a reduction in movement of sediment, which is huge, especially for fish habitat. Uh, but there's also a reduction in, in phosphorus movement um, because phosphorus is often, not totally, but often attached to, sol uh, to particles. And, um, and one of the things that I heard was, well, doesn't that sediment go through your pipe and, and down the pipe? And, and uh, my response to that is, if sediment is moving through the soil and through your pipe, your drainage system isn't designed properly. Again, I, did, I covered this really quickly, but if you have a type of soil that actually allows or encourages the movement of, of particles, um, they'll put filter fabric. They, um, again, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, but they'll put sock on it. That's the that's local term to make sure that it's not moving because uh, that's important for the farmers to keep the nutrients on the land and to keep the, uh, the soil on the land as well. So. So is there impacts? Yeah, I think it's mostly, mostly nitrogen related, um, but is it going to be any more than if you didn't have any tiled land? Um, this past January, um, about three weeks ago, we had about four inches of rain on, on frozen conditions, um, record rainfall events, and this is again all related to climate change, had nothing to do with, with tile drainage or municipal drains but I can guarantee you there was some water quality issues with all that water running over land. Um, in, in overall, um, there is no, uh, sorry, to summarize, there's no approvals that are required for water quality. And we generally, um, like there's been some literature reviews that are done, we tend to find that there's a net benefit. Now, again, uh, I, I, I also wanna stress, I'm not saying that the, uh, um, in the past, when we drained wetlands, there hasn't been a negative one from that, but that, a lot of that was done 50, 100, 150 years ago. 